raised activity is actually based on a topic that we did in our last unit, albeit a topic that we did fairly close to the end of our last unit. It's called the Current Balance Lab. In essence, what we're going to do here is find some relationships. Find some relationships that we've really already found. So I guess, in essence, we're verifying some relationships. The equation that, re that it all relates to is this one. The magnetic force acting on a wire that's exposed to an external magnetic field is equal to the current going through that wire times the length of the wire that's exposed to the field times the perpendicular magnetic field strength. You will perform two separate activities here. You will combine them in the end to find the magnetic field strength of the magnet that you're using in this activity. Here's how it's going to work. Part one. You're going to have an apparatus that looks something like this. It's on the back table here right now. Okay, it consists of a retort stand. Uh, hooked up to the retort stand, you can see uh, this thing that we call a current balance apparatus. Just, it's just uh, clamped onto the retort stand. Now, there's two conducting bars on this retort stand. Hooked up to each of these bars is a wire. And that wire, each of those wires goes to a power supply. One to the negative side of the power supply, one to the positive side of the power supply. If we turn on that power supply, we can supply an electric current to that current balance through here and through here, through this little thing right here that I've got circled right now, which is actually a plug-in cartridge. It's a plug-in cartridge because it allows us to change the length of the wire easily by taking out that cartridge and putting another cartridge in. It's all measured for you already as well and labeled as 8.4 centimeters or 6.4 centimeters or whatever the case may be. So the current goes through the current balance uh, arm there, it goes through the wire that's in this little cartridge, goes through the other side of it, goes back to the power supply, and so on and so on and so on. Now, that little, that little cartridge, I don't know how well you can see that on the board here right now, but that little cartridge is actually placed in between a couple of magnets, a white magnet and a, and a red magnet, a north pole and a south pole. In other words, it's in an external magnetic field. When there's a current going through that wire, that wire should experience a magnetic force as a result of that external magnetic field. That magnetic force acting on the wire will be equal and opposite to the magnetic force that acts on the magnets. If object A applies a force on B, object B applies an equal and opposite force on A. So if, if the wire is pushed by the magnets, then the magnets will be pushed by the wire. That's how we're going to get our results here. Because these magnets are sitting on a scale, we're going to trick the scale into thinking there's more mass. When the magnets are pushed down, the scale will read a greater value, a greater mass. We're going to convert that mass into a force by multiplying it by 921. That will give us the magnetic force. So we can measure the current easily by looking at the power supply. We can measure the length of the wire even easier because it's printed right on the uh, cartridge. And we can measure indirectly the magnetic force by looking at the scale reading in grams, whatever the case may be, in grams, converting it to a force by multiplying it by 9.81. And that's all the data that we need. So it's going to look something like this. What are you going to do first? Well, you got to make sure that you put this cartridge, this wire cartridge, in between the two magnets. Make sure that it's all of it is in between. Make sure that part of it's not sticking out the end. Make sure that uh, it's not touching the magnets. Make sure it's not pushing the magnets down. Sometimes, if you don't do it carefully, uh, a little piece of the plastic of the cartridge is in between the magnets, but the wire itself isn't. Yeah, we want to make sure the wire is in between the magnets completely and not touching the magnet itself. When the power supply is turned off and you've got it set up like this, I want you to press the zero button on the scale. So we want the scale to think there's no mass on it when the magnets are on it. When we turn on the power supply, you're going to turn the bottom knob, or sorry, the voltage knob, which is the top knob, as far to the right as it will go. And you're going to turn the current knob, the one on the bottom, as far to the left as it will go. And then you're going to adjust the current knob, slowly, gradually. And as you do this, this value for current that you see right here is going to change. It's going to go up. 
as you do that, I want you to record the value of the current. Okay, pick a current. Okay, write that current down. 0 0.34 amps, let's say. Okay, write that current down. And then see what mass you see on the scale as a result of that current. In other words, see what the magnetic force is that's caused by that current going through the wire in the external magnetic field. In this case, you see 0 0.29 grams. Don't forget, if you're changing the current here, you're going to keep the length of the wire the same, right? You're not going to switch the cartridges in the first experiment. Make sure you write down the length of that wire. See, whatever it is, doesn't matter which length you use, which cartridge you use, just make sure that you write down whichever one you get to use. Say 8.4 centimeters, whatever the case may be. Okay, repeat this. Go to a different current. Go to a higher one. Go to a higher one. Go to a higher one. Get 10 different currents and 10 different corresponding masses that result from that. Just a word of caution here, though. Here's what some people always want to do. I'm going to be so organized, they think. I'm going to just pick my currents ahead of time. 0 0.1 amps, 0 0.2 amps, 0 0.3 amps, and so on. Okay, I'm going to go up by perfect amount each time. First of all, it doesn't matter if you go up by even each time. Okay, that's irrelevant. Second of all, don't pick your currents ahead of time. Don't write them down ahead of time. Because sometimes it's a little bit hard adjusting that knob to get the exact value you have written down. If you're adjusting it, and you can't get 0 0.2, but you end up with 0 0.21, who cares? Write down 0 0.21. You just make sure you record whatever it is that you're actually using. And then, of course, whatever mass results are. Don't go over 2 amps, by the way. Your maximum current here, 2 amps. You don't even have to reach that. You can stay significantly below that, uh, but just don't go over 2 amps. Part 2. Well, if in part 1 we change the value of the current and kept the length of the wire the same, in part 2 we're going to change the length of the wire and keep the current the same. So pick a current. It doesn't matter what it is. My suggestion, maybe an amp. Be one amp. Okay, whatever it happens to be. Then you're going to look in the box with all these cartridges in it and keep swapping out the cartridges. Okay, if you're starting with whatever, 8.4 centimeters, switch the next one to 6.4 centimeters, and so on and so on and so on. Okay? Write down the current that you use. Record that value. Even though it's not changing, you still need that value. Write down the six lengths. You can do that ahead of time because the lengths are exact. Okay? We know what those lengths are going to be. Okay, whatever those lengths are, find out what the resulting mass. Notice I've got that in quotation marks because it's not really a mass, right? We're not really changing the mass. Okay, the scale thinks or changing the mass. So whatever the scale reads is what you're going to record here. Once, notice there's only six trials here as well. We only have six different lengths of wire. That's why there's only six trials in this one. Once you've got that, you're going to do some calculations. The first two columns in each analysis table here are the same as the data tables. But the third column is different. The third column, magnetic force in both tables, comes from taking the mass in grams, converting it to kilograms, divide by 1,000 to do that, and then converting it to newtons. So we're going to do that by multiplying it by 9.81. So whatever you get in the second column there, divide it by 1,000 to get kilograms, and then multiply it by 9.81 to get newtons. That's really a force of gravity, right? But that's what's acting on the scale. Okay, or at least that's what the scale thinks is acting on it is the force of gravity. It's really the magnetic force. But since the scale is interpreting the magnetic force as a force of gravity, we're going to multiply the mass by 9.81 to get that magnetic force. Do the same thing over here. Then, you'll probably guess what's going to come next. What's next? Graph, right? Two graphs, in fact. The first graph is going to be force versus current from your first experiment. Of course, you're keeping the length of the wire the same in the first experiment, so there's only two variables that are changing here. Current manipulated, force the responding variable. You will get a straight line graph. Unless you royally mess up on this activity, you will get a straight line graph, at least very, very close to a straight line graph. Then we've got to interpret that straight line graph. We've done this a couple of times with, with a couple of different activities here. 
the equation for any straight line graph is y is equal to mx plus b. Well, there should be no y-intercept on this one. It should go through the origin, so we'll make it y is equal to mx. The y-axis is the force. m is the slope. And the x-axis is the current. So the equation that describes this graph becomes f is equal to the slope times i. Now we've got to get an equation from our data sheet that has the same variables in it. f is equal to i, l, b. Let's cross off things that appear in bold. f appears in bold. i appears in bold. What are we left with? Slope is equal to l times b. Now, the slope, you can measure pretty easily, right? You can find the slope just on Microsoft Excel or by using a delta y over delta x. L, well, that stayed the same throughout the entire experiment, and you wrote it down in your data table what the value of L was there. So knowing the slope and knowing L, you can find the value of B, the magnetic field strength. Calculate that value. Then you're going to do almost the same thing with the data from the second experiment. Except this one is force versus wire length instead of force versus current. It's also going to be a straight line through the origin. The equation that describes the graph, y is equal to mx plus b, but there is no y-intercept. The y-axis is force. m is the slope. And the x-axis is the length of the wire. The equation from our data sheet. Cross off things that appear in both. What are we left with? The slope and IB. So in the second experiment, you can find the slope just as easily as you could in the first. The current you measured and you kept the same, one amp or something like that. Again, you can find the value of the magnetic field by just doing a simple calculation there. What would you expect the magnetic field strength to be? Order of magnitude. You know, 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the positive 3. What range would you expect it to be in? What was the average magnetic field strength on the surface of the Earth caused by the Earth? 10 to the minus, 10 to the minus 5. It's going to be stronger than that, isn't it? The bar magnets produce stronger magnetic fields. How much stronger? Probably about a thousand times stronger. We're probably looking at somewhere 10 to the minus 2. Could be 10 to the minus 1 if it's really strong magnets. Could be 10 to the minus 3 if it's weak magnets. But it's going to be somewhere in that range, right? If you end up with a 10 to the minus 6, what should you do? Yeah, rethink things. Check your work, because you probably made a mistake if you end up with 10 to the minus 6. Probably with a unit conversion somewhere, to be honest. Are you okay with that, guys? Does that make sense? All right, what do we got to hand in? Easy. You're going to hand in data, and you're going to hand in analysis. That's it. Data and analysis, essentially what's on that page. Including the graphs, yeah.